Good morning and welcome to Grassroots on Spatula TV. This is a program that highlights the activities of government, individuals, and organizations on how they touch the lives of the ordinary people at the grassroots across the various communities we have. In today's program, we are going to look at the activities of the Nasarawa State Emergency Management Agency, NASEMA, under the leadership of Barrister Zachary Alumaga. Sir, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Sir, can we uh, know you more? Yes. I am, uh, like you said, Zakari Zamani Alumaga, Executive Secretary in Nasarawa State Emergency Management Agency. Uh, it will surprise some people that um, I am now in emergency management. While here to now, what I do was merely to send people to prison and back for a salary. <laughs> in other words, what I'm saying is that I was a magistrate. Okay. And in that process, you don't take nonsense. You don't sympathize with anybody. Yes. But I found myself now on the other side that everything you do now is about sympathy. Uh, sympathy. It's about understanding. It is about... Uh, trying to carry the people to make sure that you give them a life worth living. Okay. Now, that is why I said uh, some people will be surprised. But I, I ran the civil service, I was in the judiciary all along, until I became a magistrate and then I, I sort of jumped out of the judiciary with a view to, you know, thought that the grass is greener over there and we had to look for some fertile land to farm there. To farm there. So we now decided to leave and get into politics, but we didn't have the temerity to come back okay. to the judiciary. So I remember where I am. Thank Fortunately, you. somewhere along the line, His Excellency Senator, Tanko Almukura appointed me executive secretary of uh, the MBS, Nasarawa Broadcasting, Broadcasting. Okay, uh, Service. Service. I was the board secretary there. Okay. Well, until again, you know, some reshufflement I was dropped and then reappointed subsequently as executive secretary of Nasema. I had my PC here and there. Within the interim, yes, I was involved in several other things. For instance, I had been a lecturer, a university lecturer, a polytechnic lecturer, at various times teaching law oh, wow. in various institutions. Now, until two years back, I was a facilitator with the Open University. The Lafia uh, Campus, Study Center. Yes. It's okay. so you have been the executive secretary of the Nasrawa State uh, Emergency Management Agency for some time now. Can you tell us how the Nasema has affected the lives of uh, the ordinary man uh, on the street or at the grassroots? It is, yeah. I wouldn't want to say that uh, it is not to say ordinary man, no. Because the rich also cry. Okay. Nasema is supposed to bring in suko when there is crying of any kind. Okay. If you find floods, for instance, yes, yes, devastating an area, and the rich live in that area, they also cry. Okay. If there is a fire disaster, for instance, and the rich live there, they also cry. Okay. If there is a, a petrol Tanker boss, tanker boss, and the rest of them, and the rich is entangled in the Goslo, they will also cry. Okay. So it is not only about the poor, it is even the rich. It depends on whether you find yourself on any side of the divide at the time it is happening. Okay. Yes, I have been in Nasema for some time now. One thing I have appreciated is that it is also a form of social contract. Okay. 
between the government and the people. To suggest that if you have a problem, government will come in there and try to see how they will bring Sukkot. Sukkot. Essentially, the core mandate of my agency is first of all sensitization and education okay. of the people towards what? <clears throat> towards making sure that you don't get disadvantaged, that you don't create for yourself some problems that at the end of the day will make the leech also to cry. Okay. In other words, what I'm saying is we have natural and man-made disasters. disasters. Now, where it is man-made, we will tell you that this will affect you. Okay. While it is natural, we we'll just get ready to assist you if it does happen. Okay. Because there is no person who can divert the will of God. So if it is God that says, let the place be flooded, you have no option. It will be flooded. But if you yourself decide to go and build on waterways or farm on waterways or by any act of yours dropping uh, refuse, ga refuse uh, garbages and the rest of them on waterways, you have blocked them. And water does not need your permission to move. <laughs> if you block that other way, it will look for another way. It will just go in there and try to just cause havoc for you. So we try to sensitize people, try to educate them against the dangers of so doing. We also decide to discuss with, you see, throughout the season, we have something to talk about. For instance, the year. After the rainy season, it will be the hammer time. Okay. It will be winter. So the wind will be blowing everywhere. The bush itself we is already the drying. Yes. So the tendency for people to put fire in the bush and the rest of them, very, very high. In the process, cause damage. There are people who don't go to pick their crops from the farm early. Yes. They leave them until they proceed in the next year or something. So if you do go and burn the bush and it gets to this month's open granary, it will burn the crops. So we sensitize people not to be hope doing that. And then you see when the wind, Hamatan wind, starts blowing, it will take fire from one point to another. another yes. Sometimes the fire may end up on somebody's roof. Mm -hmm. If it does end up on your own roof, the better because you cost it. <laughs> but it may end up on somebody's roof, and that will be very, very disastrous. It's disastrous. You know, you have put some people in crisis. So we will go into that sensitization about the fire crisis. Then the next one is the heat that comes with immediately after Hamada. Mm -hmm. Consequently causing all these non-sicknesses like cholera, uh, malaria fever, and so on and so forth. So we again we will go into sensitization of having to tell the people, look, be careful, you must uh, sleep, open your windows, you must get a lot of fresh air, otherwise you will be susceptible to one form of sickness or the other, and so on. So we are just there. In the event that, you know, people do not hear, oh, it is natural, just like I said, and it happens. If the water level, for instance, in River Benue rises high, Five local governments in Nasara State are in trouble because it will flood. Yes. It will be overtaken by floods, especially those communities that are by the river and are by the riverside. And the floods will get to them, and it's always a big problem if you have a situation like that. So, we will now have to run up and down. First of all, try to make sure that everyone is rescued. For those of them who refuse to rescue themselves because we go on sensitization to tell them to leave because we have been warned by NENMET or NEMA or Federal Meteorological Agency, Agency or Federal Ministry of Water Resources.
several organizations into that area. They will give warning and we will go and warn. But you find that the people don't want to take the heat to warnings. Until Sometimes it happens. maybe they don't have anywhere to run to. Well, uh, most of the time they didn't. They have not made that available to us. They didn't give us that type of excuse. On the contrary, they tell us that this is ancestral land. And the ancestors have been living here. It will be a taboo if or it will be a cause for them to leave that area. So they will continue to remain in that area. And so they will remain until the floods come. We battle this year. Next year we will come again and battle. And the other year we will come again and battle. So you is see, it not, we, uh, sorry to cut you, sir, is it not appropriate that the government should have uh, may, maybe develop alternative housing arrangements and uh, move those people completely out of that area into a new area? When you find a man telling you that his great-grandfather was buried here, his bones are here, and he is attaching some spiritual importance, importance to, to that area. how can you come and say you want to relocate him? It's they, okay. will court, they will carry court classes. It's okay. Of course, we had a situation, you know, there is a village upon this river Rhine town called Guto. And I went there, I experienced very clearly. There is a staff chief in that area, a second class chief, who now mobilizes people and said they should leave. Then the district head of the area, who is under the staff chief, staff chief. now mobilized the people and said nobody should go anywhere. <laughs> We must remain here, and the thing was almost becoming some form of physical crisis, wow. some war. This is just one incident I specifically can mention can to mention. you, because if you get there now, they will tell you, yes, this is what happened. Now we went there and there. In the course of the sensitization, you don't just go and ring a bell, stand on the road and talk and go back, no. It you, for instance, call all the stakeholders, that is, all the elderly persons and so on and so forth, to the palace of the chief. The chief. Then you address them there. Those who questions were asked. So we did it all across the state. So people are so much informed, you have so much communicated, you have so much discussed. And sometimes they will just decide to discuss casually that they cannot move because this is their ancestral. But if they have fear, probably the government will not compensate them properly and the rest of them, they have not made that kind of suggestion. But at the same time, too, I want to tell you, even if they made the suggestion, government is aware of its responsibilities. For instance, I will tell you, after the the crisis that arose from the anti-open air greasing law that was set up in Benue. Okay. That crisis, we had a split over that came to Nasarawa, okay. particularly with the neighboring communities with Benue. Indeed, the thief man is substantially in Nasarawa State too, particularly at the river line area. That is the area that is bordering Benue for the name of it. So the Benue River mm. appears to be something like the boundary. So most of them are here in Nasara. When the crisis started in Benue, we had a split over. We had a split over. In Nasara. In Nasara State. And it's not the first time. Mm. Even before I went to the agency, I was told that we have had them on two or three occasions before. But this and one so, is the 2018 one in, in, in particular. Yes. Okay. Yes. This one I witnessed. Okay. I was already there as executive secretary. So they will, they will move over. So the, and the moment you come in, and the moment this crisis starts, the bad aspect of it is that criminal activities will set will in. Set in. Hoodlums will now even go themselves, not because any insurgent is coming with a gun. The people will just go to behind the house, tell the house, houses, the village, the hamlet or something, and shoot guns there. And then give you the impression that those people who are the enemies are coming. are coming. So you begin to escape for your day life. 
so, so, and so then that when, they will loot the properties. Yes, loot after looting, they set it ablaze. At the end of the day, even the houses do not survive. You see that? And then you leave people with this issue of becoming IDPs. They are internally displaced, displaced and they go to camps and so on. So they don't find it easy. And so the issue of coming back to the village or hamlet or where they were is not particularly easy. When it was so serious, the federal government sent the vice president here. Yes. He came to the state here, he went to Benue, took a look at the areas of crisis, saw the, in, the internally displaced people in Nasarawa state here, he addressed them in a way. He addressed them in uh, uh, Tunga, he addressed them in Agyaragu, he addressed them, uh, uh, what is the name of this? The junction to Azara. Okay. Um. Yes, he addressed them there. So he got places in, that in Adugu. Adudu. Adudu, yes. Adudu, Adudu. yes. Adudu. Yes, he addressed them in Adudu too. Then we came back and then I think went back. The federal government set up a committee that came. Went from village to village. Took stock. Measured the houses they had. But decided to modernize this type. Because most of them are these houses with touch roof. Touch roof, yes. Uh, and then most of the, the, again, is this ring kind of a house. Yeah, now, but the new design was made by new architects. And then government said they were going to build each for everybody. In consequence thereof, they released the sum of 10.9 billion naira. Yes. Unfortunately, as I talk to you, Civil service bottlenecks, I think, were the first encumbrance was uh, the political era. It just went into election. It was well, the money was released yes, when it was uh, election, which was period. Uh, election period. Yes. yes, so I think the, some people prefer to go and campaign for their candidates than to come and walk here. Who oh, didn't have up to now <laughs> that we are talking here? It does not happen. It's okay. So, sir, it seems the work of uh, the uh, state emergency management uh, agency is quite enormous. So, um, what is the relationship, uh, the inter um, um, agency, that is the relationship between the uh, NASEMA and other MDAs in the state? Well, it's a very important question, and I think. Uh, I have been looking forward to making this position very clear for people. Okay. Because when they call NASEMA, for instance, everyone thinks that, yes, in emergency management, we should have everything. So people will come in there and want to see ambulance that are supposed to be used when there is emergency. emergency. Mm -hmm. They will want to come and see the boat and the ship that will go even if there is an emergency. They want to see fire service department if there is an emergency, some kind of health department and the rest of them. So people, I, the, the expectation is very high. Now, the law that creates that uh, NASEMA, for instance, NEMA in Abuja, yes. and then brought to the states and domesticated, creating NASEMA for us here. That law makes some people stakeholders, members of the bo governing board okay. of the agency, the agency yes. to take decisions and execute decisions. Now, in that board, you have, for instance, the police, you have the civil defense, you have fire brigade, or fire service, you have ministry of information. Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Ministry of Works, NUDB, some other parastatals, and so on and so forth. Okay. So if there is any problem, you sit down with all the members, these stakeholders. These stakeholders, yes. Now, supposing you tell me that uh, we have a post of Lassa fever around Nigeragu, 
and is already causing death. Oh, you have cholera in Kefi. It's already causing death. Oh, malaria crisis has increased in Akwanga and is causing a lot of problems. Nasa wouldn't go there. I don't have a department in the office there to say, you go. You go. Okay. Except for the directors who are there. So what I will do is to call fire service and tell them there is fire here. Okay. Because they are also part of the board. Yes, yeah, they are part of it. Okay. But the law, they are, stake with, they, are, they, are, they are members of the oh, board of the governors. Board. Yes. So they are in the governing council. So, but then the directive will come from the executive the secretary. secretary yes. You go here. So they will go. Okay. Then when there is uh, this other type of crisis, medical or so, you call Ministry of uh, Health. I said there is one crisis here. Health crisis here, you go there. And then if it is the grassroots type, you now tell uh, uh, primary health care development agency. Those ones are more at the grassroots than uh, the Ministry of Health. Okay. So you call them and tell them, look, there is this one. The sign of sensitization that will go from there into the grassroots will be bigger. So you, you may not want to... Meanwhile, I will assure you that uh, so far so good, the relationship, yes, is, is good enough. It's okay. We don't have a problem at all with all those ones. This one calling, this one calling. Except, of course, you can always have shortcomings. Very, very big shortcomings. For instance, uh, there was flood in one local government. Serious, serious flood. And then it was someone from Abuja who called me okay. to tell me that there is flood in my own state. And the next person to call is the governor himself who called me and said there is flood here. Am I aware? I said, yes, I've just been told. Now you see, but at that time, if whatever it is, I may not be able to go and jump into the water and say I'm going to save anybody. Any, anybody. So what did I do? Call fire brigade. Call civil defense. They have a department that has to do with rescue, yes. sea rescue, uh, water rescue. So call them and tell them that, look, there is this problem here. You move there. And they call, uh, what is their name? Rob, uh, Red Cross. Uh, Red Cross, yes. And tell them that, look, these people will need to be evacuated. You get there before us. So because now that we are going, we are going empty-handed, what, what can we do? Even if I see the water calling any person, I can't you, swim. You can't jump into it. I can't swim. It's not my, <laughs> my, my job. So you call those other people and they will do it effectively for you. They will do it effectively. So we rely on that, especially fire service. But the incubrance that we are having is that when it is happening, people, they wouldn't call. Like I said, they, I was called from Abuja, then the governor called me, and then I called the local government chairman. So in, in, and said, in, in, are you in, aware? Instead of the information coming, from, coming there, from there, it is now going from, 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 up, from top to down. To down which is not the issue with emergency. No, when it is an emergency situation, it should come from, should down, come from down. Because that's where it happened. Even though I said it is not about the poor crying, it is also the rich. But the rich that is affected is down, you know, up. Now, sometimes the people at the grassroots who are affected may not be able to reach out to... Uh, the agency directly. Is there any form of number or contact that in case of emergency, somebody can call to reach out to <coughs> the state emergency management agency? You see, we have so much numbers. Okay. We have so much contact and we have told the people that any person who says he cannot get us, I think he's not ready to listen or he's not ready to get us. Is it possible this you can give one of the numbers to the public now? Yes, I will give, in fact, I will give all. Your ward head. Okay. What they call me, Angwa. Okay. Your district head. Okay. Your village head. Okay. Your councillor. Okay. 
you are chairman of the local government or overseer, whatever. Okay. All these people are members of SEMA. Okay. If you get to them, you've gotten to us. I can also volunteer that this station too, if we get across to us, we will yeah. help you reach out to stay Indeed. to SEMA. Indeed. So, Thanks, uh, Amelia. If you see w any of our phone numbers rolling on the screen, you can reach us and we will help you reach out to uh, the State Emergency Management Agency at any point in time. We are grateful. Grassroot on Spatula, bringing you development for the local man. Recently, the... Um, Nigerian army and the other security agencies uh, discovered uh, uh, a camp, a terrorist camp in Nasrawa local government area of the state. Or is it total local government, total. Uh, total local government area of the state? And um, uh, after the camp were uh, um, dispersed, uh, most of the people uh, under their captivity were rescued. Uh, what role did the uh, state emergency management a agency played in uh, in that uh, operation. Well, <coughs> the truth of the matter is that it is more of a security matter. Okay. Because you are talking about insurgency. You are talking about kidnappers. You are talking about armed robbers. And so. Uh, religious bigots or fanatics and troublemakers because the root of it came from a religious organization, organization. called Da'u Salam. Da'u Salam. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, the military shrouded it in secrecy. In any event, the military specifically are not part of SEMA. Okay. They could be part of NEMA, not SEMA. Not SEMA. Okay. So we couldn't have even invited them, or they couldn't have even invited accounted them. to us the extent of their operation. Yes, they went and, uh, you know, dismantled the camp. Yes, they broke up the camp. Uh, and what they told us was uh, as a result of... Uh, information, security information that they got that there is a camp there and those people are causing havoc around there. The ones kidnapping, killing, maiming, raping and so on of people along Abaji. Along Abaji, uh, uh, what is the name of it? Uh, da, Gwagwalada, da, Gwagwalada, Gwagwalada Baji, Baji Road, yeah. yes. And then sometimes they spill over to, yes, right up to Nasarawa. And because they came from Niger mostly, they are aware of the terrain. And Kogi. Yes. Some of them are aware of the terrain. Obviously, some form of thick forest off the main road or the third road. Uh, we are told it's a three day journey to get to the place. Wow. A three day journey. The military had to do that about it. And when they went there, they got they rescued the people. Seven hundred and seventy-eight were rescued, but from this seven hundred and seventy-eight, uh, not up to two hundred were women. Wow. All the rest were children. Yeah, children. And these children were just below the ages of twelve. Wow. That's over 500 children. Over 500 children, yes. Wow. Say it with a loud voice. Hmm. They are not more than 12, 12 years, years old. old. All the children. You see them there. So those are the ones that were rescued. Apart from Niger State and Kogi that was invited to come and collect their own indigenous yeah. after profiling by the military in Doma the headquarters of the army brigade that to handle the operation. They collected their own right from there. The rest that we were brought here were 416. So they were kept in the camp of the emergency management Manager. agency. And uh, kept giving them yes, the necessary assistance. Just like I said before, if you say 
maybe the doors to the camp and the rest of them are not too good. We call the Ministry of Works. Works. To come and fix. To come and fix it. Then one or two persons have injuries. Come Some of them are beginning to be caught up with mosquitoes and malaria set in and the rest of them. Call, you call the Ministry of uh, Health. Yeah. Specifically, I did call the uh, CMD of Dash. Oh, Dash, okay. Who sent uh, two doctors to come and look at. In the camp, one girl fell down and uh, broke her leg. Hmm? So, uh, the CMD had to send uh, Dr. Ngolaga. And so, when you come, now we have uh, Dr. Anazodo who is doing all the running around. So when you have things like this, everybody is an expert in his field. Meanwhile, we take custody of the inmates, yes, but the security is provided by both the police and the DSS. And the DSS. Okay. That is what we have. And then the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development provides the feeding okay. and other sundry matters like uh, the soap, the bath wheat, and then the drugs, even when the doctors write the drugs and they are not uh, going there, we will buy them. We will buy the buckets, the plates, the spoons, the, this one they would use in the place. That is what the Ministry of Human Development did. And under a very close watch of Sam. So politics is local. Uh, as an Igoma, can you tell us how the Igom people are faring in governance in Nasarawa state? Are they really satisfied? Are they being involved in governance enough? Uh, you are a stakeholder and a grassroots pro politician, and you have been uh, in the forefront of uh, the quest for the. Uh, marginalization of uh, Igon people for some time now. So tell us your view on how the Igon people are being involved in governance in Nasarawa State. Well, uh, if we want to hide the truth, we will deceive ourselves by saying we are fair anyway. Mm -hmm. But if we want to tell the truth, it is as if we are not just there. And for those of us who ventured into politics, we've been telling our brothers and sisters, political patronage is about participation. You did not participate in the campaign. You did not participate in the electoral, uh, whatever, the manipulations and the rest of them that takes place during the election the itself. Elections. You are an animist as far as this process is concerned. You are nonchalant. Yes. And if you have to participate at all, you are taking a very rigid side. In other words, you just say you are an Igor man and you must vote for an Igor man. But quite incidentally, I cannot remember very clearly which of the elections that the Igor man did not contest. I cannot remember. For governorship, I mean. So all the elections, Igon people must come looking for governor or something. And so you find the Igon man becoming so dogmatic about this tribal consciousness and saying I must go and vote an Igon man. Unfortunately, we have always lost. And like I said, political patronage is about participation. Participation. Because you did not participate, no one will patronize you. To that extent, it will be wrong for any person to say the Igor man is satisfied with what is happening. What does he have? He's not. He's not. So we, if by some paraventure, we have an, a lucky Igor man, like you have me here, who was uh, the director legal department of the AA Sule campaign organization. Naturally, I should still be in government. 
but probably because right from the beginning I was co-opted. Otherwise, I would have been an enemy too, and my brother, I wouldn't have been there. That is a kind of crisis that I want people to appreciate is happening. The Ugons here yes, have the population here in this state. I maintained, I said it before, and I'm going to repeat it now. That being so consistent, I'm going along with friends. You see, the point is that somebody will say, can a government alone contest or vote and win election? Is it possible for a government alone to vote and win election? Can win election? No, sir. No. The constitution says you must go with other people. The deputy governor will not be gone. The man you are going to pr promise SSG is not gone. Head of service or commissioners, permanent secretaries and so on. These are political appointments. They are not gone people. So go and promise people from other tribes. When they bring ruminants of their votes and add to your block vote, your block vote. you make it. But we are not ready to do so. Ready more to stay in the opposition or claim that an government must be the one is sacrosanctly made to be governor and every other person must shut up. That is the crisis we're having. And so the guns are not, uh, no, I won't say. The, we all know it. Even those of them who were put in places that you think are of assistance politically, if they were there at all. Yes. The, before you know, they will have uh, one or two changes, taking them to places where they will be completely irrelevant and inconsequential. I believe that uh, we had our distinguished senator, Godia Akwashiki, Akwashiki yes. who was a chairman of a very powerful committee in the Senate. That committee could only just give him he should just take you and give you a note or mention you to somebody and it is already I, I, done. I, I, and, and it's done. Unfortunately, he was removed from there and given another committee. He hardly sat down before case first to Skeemu. You know, brought him mm -hmm. to grass. You know, walked out on him. And somehow it rendered the committee important. important. So the employment of people or the giving of people some opportunities to do, even that one he wasn't getting again. So you see the problem. And that is why I mean by <clears throat> even if you are in a committee that seems to look as if it is juicy or juicy. of help, because my definition of politics is very simple. What do I get, me? What do I get, Alumaga? What do you get? And what do your people get? If you take a borehole to my village, we have gotten political dividends. Yes. If you take a school to my village, if you take a hospital to my village, that is what we need politically. Then if you give me councillor, if you give me appointment, if you give me G ES, yeah, then there's political dividends for me. And then the one my people will get is also the dividends. But by some peradventure too, we get lucky sometimes. For instance, we came from a community where it was an easy house for hoodlums, criminal activities, rogues and crooks to operate. Now, they went a mile further than they are supposed to do and then made sure that the deputy governor of the state was their victim. <coughs> So when the I issue came as to where do we put mobile training institution <laughs> here, it was easy to lobby because you already have a reason. A reason. This place is so dangerous. It's so dangerous that even our deputy governor was in trouble. I think it was around the same area that uh, the former governor of uh, Benue State, Benue State, now uh, minister of Inter uh, governmental affairs, uh, Senator uh, Dr. George Akume, was also attacked. It is he, about he, uh, in, in about ten kilometers interval from the same. Yes, yes, as it, just yes. about. The minister was attacked at Nguachiawa Kululu and Kabanda. Okay. And then where this the deputy the governor deputy was, was attacked is at uh, Endehu. 
to just it's take just a little bit within. Yes, yeah, just the, within. It's a rocky area. area. It's a rocky area that, uh, you know, encapsulated the Igor land, actually. That is the duty we're talking about. Okay. Yes. So, uh, by some kind of, like I said, luck, sheer luck, because of this because incident. Because of this incident. You know, police training institution have been brought, been to, that brought to that place. That is the only thing that we have. In the Golan land, that is the only federal presence. Not even girls' secondary school, federal <laughs> girls' secondary school. Not even a police primary school in any part of Igon land or where an Igon man is at all. None. It is only this one. Viewers, that's how much we can take on today's edition of the program Grassroots. I've been speaking with Barista Zakari Alumaga, the Executive Secretary of the Nasrawa State Emergency Management Agency. See you next time, same time. I've been your host, Martin Yosambe.